Listen to Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Of all the weapons of modern warfare, those that have gained the greatest notoriety are the guided missiles, the death-dealing germs, the terrifying atomic and H-bombs. But perhaps the deadliest, the most vicious weapon of all, is one that we cannot see nor feel, but the impact of which can be a thousandfold more destructive. The weapon, the big lie. A widow in a modest New York apartment receives a mysterious telephone call. I got it from a guy who was drafted at the same time. Just thought you ought to know. They're sending his son overseas right away. And he hasn't even learned how to fire a rifle. (laughs) Just thought you ought to know. rumor spreads throughout a minority community in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, yeah, they're really getting a raw deal. All of your guys in Korea are being used as assault troops. They get themselves bumped off, knocking out enemy positions, and the other boys move up without even getting their hair mussed. <laughs> Talk about a raw deal. In a small town just outside an army camp in Tennessee. The way I heard it, They don't know how good these new atom rockets will work against troops. So they shipped A and B companies out to the proving grounds last week to use them as human guinea pigs. They say the hospital's already full of guys dying from atom burns. So it looks like we're faced with another Operation Big Lie, Chief. If you don't think so, Ken, look at these reports. Dallas, New York, Kansas City, San Francisco. The same thing everywhere. Rumors, rumors, rumors. Yeah, the old story. Play race against race and religion against religion. Throw suspicion on our whole defense program. Uh, What's been done about it, Chief? I've got men assigned to every principal city. So far, they've turned up nothing. Not one lead as to where those rumors are coming from. I tell you, Ken, this thing has got me so upset that I... Uh, Excuse me. Yes, Miss Brooks? A collect call for you, sir, from Chicago. Agent Jack Doyle. Oh, good. Put him on, please, Miss Brooks. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Hello, Jack. What's going on there in Chicago? What have you got for me? Hello, Mr. Chief. This is Egon Zenschmidt speaking. Egon? What the devil are you doing on that phone? Miss Brooks said Jack Doyle was calling me. Sure, he is. What? Well, that is, I'm making the call for him, you understand. Only now, I don't know if he meant you or maybe the Bureau of Missing People. Bureau of Missing People? Sure. Who else do you call when somebody's missing for a couple of days or two? Who's been missing for a couple of days? That's right. What's right? He's been missing for a couple of days. Who, you idiot? Jack Doyle? No, this is Egon Zellschmidt. What's the matter? Don't you hear so good or something? <laughs> Zellschmidt, so help me if you don't start making sense and fast. But I'm making sense, Mr. Chief. That's why I'm calling you. Jack Doyle's missing and he told me if it happened to him, I should call you. So here I am. What happened to him? Where? How? I'm glad you asked me that, Mr. Chief. And I can give you the answer right out of my cuff. What happened was... Zellschmidt. Zellschmidt, what happened there? Can you hear me? What's up, Chief? Oh, there were some shots, Ken. Yes, sir. Get that Chicago operator. See if she can trace that call fast. Yes, sir. What was Egon telling you about Jack Doyle? From what I could make out of his double talk, Jack's been missing for a couple of days. Was he the man you were assigned to Chicago, tracing down those rumors? Yes, and I haven't had a report from him for a week. And then that call from Zellschmidt. I'll get it. Hello. I have that information on the phone call from... Oh, it's you, Mr. Thurston. That's right, Miss Brooks. Did you trace that call? Yes, Mr. Thurston. It came from a public phone booth in a nightclub, the Cafe Arcady. Cafe Arcady. Thanks, Miss Brooks. Oh, you're welcome. Now, I've got one more favor to ask. Yes. Your 
Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Cafe Arkham. Thanks. Now I have a table, please. You have a reservation, sir? No, I didn't make one. Well, then I'm sorry. We won't be able to accommodate you tonight. Pretty crowded, are you? Very, sir. Well, I'm glad to hear the shooting didn't keep the customers away. What shooting? I heard a rumor that a few shots were fired around here early today. The rumor was wrong. Yeah, so many of them are. You sure there's no table for me, not even for, for old times' sake? Old times' sake? We've never met before. Oh, sure, we have met you. Back in 1940, we had a little run-in concerning subversive propaganda in the German-American Bund, remember? My name's De Costa, not Becker. I never had anything to do with the Bund. You've got me mixed up with somebody else. Phone for a reservation the next time, mister. We'll be glad to accommodate you. Thanks. I may take you up on that. Good night, De Costa. Good night, sir. Hey, Joe. Joe, take over, will you? I've got business in the office. Good evening, Edward. Uh, what brings you into my office so early? Trouble, Mr. Arkady. Trouble? Just had a visitor by the name of Thurston. Ah, uh, yes. Thurston. The one we were told was a friend of Jack Doyle's. Mm -hmm. mm. And did he remember also he was an old friend of yours? He did. Is that what brought him here? Well, he said he'd heard a rumor about a shooting here. Ah, uh, I see. Edward, I dislike rumors intensely. When they might interfere with my business. I think maybe we shall have to do something about Mr. Thurston. Papa's arms, baby. The drinks are all ready and... Oh, oh, it's, it's you. Expecting someone, Ego? <laughs> Come right in, Mr. X. All right. Now, what are you doing in Jack Doyle's hotel room? What's happened to him? Come on out with it. Well, the way it happened, Mr. X, I was stuck here in Chicago, temporarily embarrassed without funds, you understand, when I ran into him. Naturally, he was so happy to see me, he insisted I shouldn't get out of his sight. Oh, sure. Then what? Uh, he said I could use his room for a couple of days. He was going to be out on some job or something, and if he didn't come back, I was to call the chief and tell him. He didn't, so I called. You called from the club, Arkady? Sure, I was looking for him. He was always hanging around there. What were those shots the chief heard? Oh, so somebody got trigger happy in Mr. Arkady's office. Naturally, I ran to the rescue, and you know what happened? You got lost in a saloon across the street. How did you know? Never mind. Did Doyle tell you what he was working on? Mention anything about rumors? Rumors? I'm the only rumor he's got. Uh, he wasn't working on anything. Or Why should he go looking for a job? For a, a job? Sure. I found the want ad he clipped out of the paper. I, I got it right here somewhere. Sure, here it is. Well, let me see that. How to be successful through talk. Learn how to sway people with words. See? The Art of Verbal Mass Communication, lectures and study groups at moderate cost. See Dr. Ralph Townsend, Suite 11B, 161 North Clark Street. Dr. Ralph Townsend. Hmm. You see what I mean, Mr. X? He was looking for a job. He was looking for something at Townsend's place. It wasn't for a job. Yes! Get down. What? What was going on, Mr. X? Somebody shooting at us, eh, huh? From the other wing of the hotel. But I didn't hear no shots. Did you ever hear of a silencer? Oh, but why would anyone want to kill us? I'll see if I can get an answer across the court. Shooting? In this hotel? Surely you must be mistaken, Mr. Thurston. No, I'm afraid not, Miss Rogers. Two shots were fired from this wing of the hotel into that room directly across from yours. But I didn't hear any... Did... Did you say into the room directly across the court from this one? That's right. But that's Mr. Doyle's room. Is it? Yes. 
Yes, sir. Mr. Doyle is a customer of mine. I operate the lending library in the hotel. I've memorized the room numbers of all my regular customers, and I... But, but wait a minute. Why didn't he come to my room? Jack Doyle has disappeared, Miss Rogers. Disappeared? Been missing for two days. But why would anyone want to kill Mr. Doyle? Or you? I was hoping that you might be able to tell me. I? But I only know Mr. Doyle is a customer of my library. Why would you think I could possibly know anything about this shooting unless... Unless you believe that the shots came from this room. Do you? Miss Rogers, I'm merely trying to get the answers to a few questions. You've got all the answers you're going to get here tonight, Mr. Thurston. Now, if you don't mind leaving... No, of course not. Sorry if I've upset you. Oh, by the way, Miss Rogers, do you happen to be interested in rumors? Rumors? Yes. Or in the use of words as a method of mass conditioning, or in a study course in how to talk your way into success. Are you being serious? Very much so. But I don't even know what you're talking about. That book on your coffee table. Book? Yeah. The Psychology of Lies, written by Dr. Ralph Townsend. Good night, Miss Rogers. Look, Mr. X, I'm tired. Why don't we stop chasing wild gooses and on lux over couple short beers? Not until we learn what happened to Jack Doyle, Edgar. But we've been driving around all day long, all over the city of Chicago, and we haven't learned nothing. No, I don't know. In a bowling alley, we learned that our soldiers will freeze in Korea this winter while the army sells heavy clothing for surplus. Huh? And a waitress in a Southside restaurant told us that the Kremlin has a direct pipeline into the atomic labs at Los Alamos. But, but your stories don't make sense. Of course they don't. They're lies. They're so big that people believe that there must be some truth to them. We've got to stop them. Well, that's okay with me, Mr. X. But what do we do? <sighs> Go to night school. Night school? Yeah. To take a course from Dr. Ralph Townsend in how to talk our way into success. Oh, this is crazy, Mr. Thurston, picking locks to get in school. Who ever heard of such a thing? You're hearing it now, Egon. You gotta move on. Okay, okay. So there, now what? You go in. At least they got a nightlight burning in that other office over there. I can see what we're looking for if I only knew what it was. Filing cabinets always a good bet. Let's try them. Okay, what do you know? This one's empty. This one, too. Say, what cooks here anyway, Mr. X? Don't that Dr. Townsend even keep his lunch in these files? Let's try this desk. Hmm... Looks like we got here too late. You mean school's out. That Dr. Townsend took it on a lamb. Doesn't make sense. Not unless Jack Doyle was able... Mr. X, somebody, somebody's in that other office. Yeah. Let's give this joint a brush out before he gets mad at us and... Huh? The light. He, he turned out the light. Oh, quiet. Shut! Watch it. All right, Pagan, let's go in there. Oh. Where's the switch? Oh. Mr. X. Yes. Jack Doyle. We return to the man called X in just a moment. Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Ken Thurston believes a rumor factory is operating somewhere in Chicago, organized to disrupt civilian and military morale and to hamper our defense program. In the offices of a Dr. Ralph Townsend, Ken exchanged shots with an unknown attacker. And now he and Aegon have entered the private office where the shots came from, and find themselves looking at the body of Jack Doyle, a missing bureau agent. Oh, I don't get it, Mr. X. Why should Mr. Doyle go shooting at us and make you kill him? I didn't kill him, Aegon. But look at him. 
He's as stiff as a poker. He's been dead at least three hours. Then, then who bumped him out? And what happened to the joker who was taking those potluck shots at us? There's a fire escape outside that window. Oh, that's right. He must have taken a couple of powders. Well, what do we do now, Mr. Thurston? <clears throat> May hmm? I offer a few suggestions, Oops. gentlemen? And my first suggestion is for you to drop that gun. Sure. Oh. And my second suggestion is that you offer some words of explanation for your presence here and the rather unusual situation in which I find you. You, Dr. Townsend? I can conceive of no reason why I should deny it. And you? My name's Ken Thurston. And I'm Mr. Egon Selschmidt. <laughs> Thank you. Now, shall we proceed with the explanations? Suppose we make that mutual, Doctor. By your telling us why Jack Doyle was killed. And why we found him in your private office. Hardly a reasonable request under the circumstances, is it, Mr. Thurston? Particularly when I expect the answers to those questions to be forthcoming from you. And if they're not... Silence may be golden in the copybooks, but here in my offices it might well prove fatal. Oh, he means that, Mr. Thurston. Well, do you talk or do I resort to... Excuse me, please, gentlemen, and kindly remain quietly where you are. Townsend here. I see. Thank you very much for informing me. Goodbye. It would appear you are having good fortune tonight, gentlemen. A colleague of mine in the lobby informs me that the police are on their way up. Our respective explanations will have to be given to them. I'd still like a chance to hear yours in private, Doctor. Do you think you can arrange that sometime? I am positive I can, Mr. Thurston. I am positive I can. They didn't know any more about it than I did, Chief. The tip that sent them to Townsend's office was anonymous. Anonymous tips, murder, filthy, lying yeah. robbers. What have you got for me? Okay. First, the Cafe Arcady, owned by Leo Arcady, ex-Russian. Came here in 39, suspected of being in the rackets. No convictions. Uh, what about his right-hand man, Ed He's DeCosta? George Becker, all right. Former German-American board member. Served five years, less ten months. No file record since he was released and changed his name. No file record on Ann Rogers, either. But her family was checked and cleared for top-secret defense work during the war. The Quarto Manufacturing Company. And Dr. Townsend? Former psychology professor with the OWI during the war. A big wheel in psychological warfare. His record's been checked a half dozen times, and it's clean as a whistle. Ah. Well, does it help any, Ken? It might, Chief. If, it could, if I could tie any of it in with engines. Huh? Yeah. Engines? Jack Doyle had a smear of diesel oil in his shoes and trousers. Ah, don't be bashful with that caviar, baby. There's plenty more fish in the ocean where that came from. And have a couple more glasses of champagne, huh? One to drink and one to watch the bubbles in. <laughs> As long as you're beating that expense account of death, you might pour one for me too, Ego. Sure, be glad to. Nothing too good for any friend. Oh, <laughs> hello, Mr. Thurston. Do you mind if I join you, Miss Rogers? Of course not. Please sit down. Thanks. How'd you two get together? Just a mutual attraction? I came here because of Jack Doyle, Mr. Thurston. Oh? I kept, I kept thinking of what you told me. And I remembered that I'd heard him mention the Cafe Arcady several times. It was a, a foolish impulse, I suppose, but, well, I just had to come down here to see if I could learn anything about him. And did you, Miss Rogers? I'm afraid not. Then I saw Mr. Zellschmidt, the man who'd been sharing Mr. Doyle's room. So when he asked me to join him, I did. It was strictly business with me, Mr. Thurston. I got a hunch his cookie knows plenty, so I've been pouring on the champagne until she gives in. <coughs> Excuse me. Talks, you understand? No sacrifice too great, eh, Edna? You said it, but... Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Thurston, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? No, go right ahead. You asked me earlier if I were interested in rumors. Yeah, that's right. Well, suppose I said that I've heard the Russians are sneaking A-bomb components into every major city in the United States 
to be set off simultaneously on D-Day. Is that the kind of a rumor you mean? Did you hear that, Miss Rogers? Here. Tonight. Remember who said it? The man at the third table to the left. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Thurston? That's Dr. Townsend. Yes. Yeah. Why do you want to be so helpful, Miss Rogers? Do I need a stronger reason than a man's murder, Mr. Thurston? No, I guess not. Hey, look. The Townsend joker's going into that back room. Do you think he's got business with the boss of this joint? Might be interesting to find out, eh, huh? Suppose the two of you wait here for me. I'll let you know. That's far enough. Listen! Quite regretful of the manner in which Edward de Costa invited you to my apartment, Mr. Thurston. Violence was not intended to be employed. Will you accept my apologies before we begin our little talk? You're in the driver's seat, Arkady. Very well. Mr. Thurston, I am an honest citizen. You represent my want of government. That is why I wish to speak with you. To set my record straight with the government. Mm. Both you and Jack Doyle have been investigating something in Chicago for some time now. Is it not true that neither of you has uncovered any criminal evidence against me? Ever hear of the big lie, Arkady? Of course. Well, I heard a very choice one in your cafe tonight. Uh, I am beginning to see that I have been... Laboring under a misapprehension, Mr. Thurston. I thought you were here to investigate me on entirely different grounds. But let me assure you that no matter what else you may believe of me, no one can question my loyalty to this country. You know, you almost make me believe that, Arkady. Just one thing that stops me. These books and pam pamphlets on your desk. Looks to me like you've been taking some courses from Dr. Townsend. I have? Why? For the simplest of reasons. I am a native-born Russian who has adopted this country for my own. I naturally wish to express myself in the best of English. Do I make myself clear? I'll give you credit for a good try. So, are there any other questions? No. Many would like to ask me? No. Good night, Mr. Thurston. Good night, Arkady. That's right, Mr. Thurston. That Miss Rogers took a powder, said she was tired of waiting for you. Probably a combat fatigue, eh, John? Couldn't take those popping champagne corks any longer. Huh? What champagne? Corks? Oh, skip it. Come on, we've got work to do. Work? Yeah. We're going to visit a factory where they manufacture rumors. There it is, Agon. That? <laughs> That's no factory. It's nothing but an old, worn-out yard tied to the dock. Is it? Let's get aboard and see. I don't get it, Mr. X. Why are we climbing down into the middle of this old ship anyway? was used as a proving ground for marine engines during the last war. Diesel engines made by the Quarto Manufacturing Company. So what? Remember the oil smears on Jack Doyle's pants and trousers? Huh? <coughs> Those came from the engine room. Come on. Oh. The, that lamp don't give much light, Mr. X. I can hardly see anything in... <gasps> Yeah. Dr. Townsend. Boy, dead like a doorknob. Yeah. I'd say he taught somebody all they needed to know about the psychology of the big lie, Agon. That right, Miss Rogers? Miss Rogers? Where else would you expect to find the boss of the outfit? Oh, no. How did you find out, Mr. Thurston? Clairvoyance or sheer genius? Simple arithmetic. Diesel oil and diesel engines add up. 
And you helped me prove it at Arcadis Cafe. I did? Yeah. You said you hadn't learned anything about Doyle there. Then you tipped your hand when you said your reason for wanting to help me was Doyle's murder. What happened, Anne? Was Doyle killed here, then taken to Townsend's office? Yes. Then Townsend was to be killed there, too. After we moved all the incriminating evidence to the ship. When you came in off schedule, it upset things. Hey, then, what are we waiting for, Mr. X? Let's take her along to the pokey. It's not that easy, Agar. Sure, she hasn't got a gun. That's right, but the guy who shot Townsend has. The guy who... Who? He means me, Zelschman. Oh! Still up to your old tricks, Da Costa? First for the Bund, now for Ann Rogers and her bosses. Why not? I've got lots of answers for that one, Da Costa. Meanwhile, I'd better smash that lamp. Wait, hold it. Shoot him, Da Costa. Don't let him get away. Shoot him. I... Where are you, Thurston? You can't get away? Thurston! Over here, DeCosta! He's over here! Thurston. Right here, DeCosta. Oh, you... Agar, uh... you all right? How... How How can I tell in all this dark? How can I? Oh, that, that flashlight helps it. Mr. X, that, that cute cookie, what happened to her? One of Bacosta's shots got her by mistake. Oh. Well, the rumor factory is finished. But, but I don't get it. If her family's got factories and yachts and stuff, what was she doing mixed up in a racket like this? That's the puzzling thing about people like her. Frightening. With everything this country has given to them, they still sell themselves on the idea that other country is better. Why can't they realize that that's the biggest lie of all? Now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Shirley Mitchell, Fritz Feld, Ted Von Els, Sheldon Leonard, Dan O'Herlihy, and Stan Waxman. Next week... To Leon Belasco will be along as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. This program is directed by Jack Johnstone. And so until next week, and please consult your local papers for time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.